Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's session, Building Digital Capability for Allied Health. Hope you all had a lovely long weekend. My name is Sydney Cruikshank and I'm from the PHN Education team. I'm joined today by my colleague Joanne Dean, who is the Senior Project Officer for Allied Health, as well as Tim Blake, who is the MD for Semantic Consulting. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we live and work on. For me on the Central Coast, that is Dark Engine land, and I'd also like to pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. A few things to let you know about this session. It will be recorded and available for you to view in our education library in a few days time, as well as a copy of the PowerPoint presentation slides. As attendees, your camera and microphone are automatically disabled. However, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just pop them in the question box, which you will find located within your control panel. Um, an evaluation will also come to you directly after this. Um, your feedback is extremely important to us as it enables us to provide future education sessions. Now I'll hand it over to you, Joe, for your introduction. Thanks, Sydney. Um, if we just want to move to the first slide there. Um, so today the, we're just going to talk about the digital care survey, um, why the PHN engaged it and how we engage. We're just also going to cover um, the results of the survey and outcomes by um, Tim at Semantic and then just some PHN contacts for further information. So next slide please. So why the PHN engaged basically is part of our strategy and allied health <clears throat> strategy, our digital health strategy, empowering allied health in the digital space is really heavily ingrained in that. So we re really needed to have an insight into our region's digital footprint and this will really help inform our work. So we partnered with Semantic Consulting. Um, we tailored a survey that was specifically for allied health and now we're just up to looking at the results. So the expected outcomes are really to ensure that PHN stays relevant to the digital needs of allied health in our region. Thanks. Next slide. Okay, I'll just hand over to Tim, who's going to talk to us about the results of the survey. Great. Thanks, Joe. And rather than just talk about this, um, we're actually going to show you the results in the analytic dashboard that was produced for this piece of work. Um, so the survey, as Joe said, the Healthy Together Digital Care Survey went out to allied health across the Hunter New England Central Coast region. Uh, we received 80 responses from different practices, um, which was encouraging and gave us um, some really interesting results. And I just want to talk to those at a high level and show you a few key highlights that I think you'll find interesting. So the first point to observe is just the distribution of scores. So what this is showing us is how many allied health practices are in each different scoring band. So obviously we had kind of one down here in the 25 to 30 out of 100 score, uh, which is quite the low end of the score. And then a number of practices at the, at the higher end and all sorts of things in between. Having done this kind of digital maturity assessment for general practice and aged care and other sectors as well, one of the observations about allied health is just the diversity in maturity. Um, and what that's really showing us is there's people who are on very different, in very different places in terms of their digital health maturity journey. Some people are really just starting out um, and, and don't even have a system that they use yet um, on the less mature end. On the more mature end, you have some practices who are very well established and who are doing some really innovative things with technology already. And that diversity speaks to the need to potentially have you know, different ways of categorising practices who are at different levels. I'll talk about that in a second under the digital health maturity levels below. Um, in terms of what we measured, we looked at what infrastructure do allied health practices have in place? So that includes ICT infrastructure and, and networking, what kind of systems are in place and being used, whether that's practice management systems, secure messaging, use of the My Health record, those kind of things. Then we look not just at what's in place, but how it's being used. So meaningful use tells us a bit about how those systems are being used relative to what's possible. Then we also ask questions about how ready are you for digital change? Um, how ready are your patients for digital change? And then a series of questions around digital literacy, data literacy and clinical leadership. And this graph that you're seeing here gives you the average scores across all of the 80 practices who have been assessed. 
And what this graph is showing us is that there are obviously, um, I think, some good clinical leadership in place. There's some reasonably good data and, and digital literacy, although, as we saw earlier, it does vary quite a bit. Um, but there's obviously a need to uplift the infrastructure in terms of the systems and things that are in place and help people work on how they use those systems. Again, it's pretty diverse, but that gives us a sense of what we need to do to support allied health across the region. What we then do in this tool is classify people into different levels. Now, this, please don't get this wrong. This is not to um, reward or to punish people. It's really just to understand where you're at on your journey. And um, there is an opportunity if you're interested to reach out and have a conversation um, with the PHN about where your practice is being classified. These results that you see here, we've just anonymized the results, so we're not giving away any information about you. Um, but obviously there's practices at a variety of different levels and the kind of help that you might need depending on your level um, may vary. So that's why we've put people into these different brackets. Um, I then want to show you a couple of key highlights that might interest you in the survey. So firstly, um, the allied health professions that responded to the survey. You can see we're here the, the most common um, respondent was a was physiotherapy, um, but also quite a lot from speech pathology, dietetics, um, occupational therapy, psychology. So there was a range of different allied health professions. And the tool we have here allows us to filter by different profession as well. Um, what we also want to do is show you um, which may be of particular interest, which practice management systems are used. And again, compared to other sectors, so general practice, which tends to use either best practice or medical director about 90% of the time, um, there's a much more diverse set of systems used across allied health, which is one of the challenges I think we face. But you can see that Halaxy and Clinico um, were, I think, most significant systems in use. Um, then again, quite a, a lot of people said they don't use the system at all. And then there are a whole range of systems that are used by just a handful of people as well. Um, so we thought you might find that interesting. Um, we are able to filter these results by allied health profession as well. Um, I also wanted to focus in on cybersecurity as something that, um, again, every sector in healthcare needs to do a little bit of work on. Um, we ask questions around whether people have an awareness of cybersecurity and, and how good that is, and whether people understand the chances of, of, of a ransomware attack and how to minimise that, and then certain behaviours around whether people are sharing logins to computer systems, whether people are writing passwords down on paper, um, and there is some good advice out there that we can point you in the direction of um, for remedying some of these things if you need help with these practices. But it, it again shows this picture that there's work to do um, when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, we'd love more people to make use of password manager tools to help them store their passwords so they don't have to write them down. So that was cybersecurity. Um, I also wanted to look, if I go further down, at um, disaster recovery. Oh, I think I've skipped over it. Here we go. Um, so disaster recovery is obviously an important area within digital maturity to make sure that you're um, properly storing data, not just backing it up, but storing it off site as well. So in the case of a genuine disaster, and we have seen this in recent years in places like Lismore during the floods, there was a GP practice who didn't back up their data and, and unfortunately um, they lost all of their data. So it's a really important thing. But a, a sizable proportion of people, uh, about 36% of allied health practices don't store their backups off site and about 50% don't have a disaster recovery plan that includes recovering IT systems um, in some cases because they don't have an IT system. So that's certainly something that's going to warrant some um, thinking when it comes to maturity. I also wanted to show you um, the results around the use of the My Health record. Um, so we asked people if they're using the My Health record. Obviously not everyone does or can because they don't necessarily have a practice management system that supports that. Um, but about 15% of people said yes, they're using the My Health record. And then if people said yes to that question, we asked what percentage of your clinicians are actively using it. So what we see is where it is in use, actually it's being used by quite a lot of um, clinicians within the practice. Um, and we asked various questions in terms of why people 
are not using it and that's often because we don't have software that enables us to um, but i think there is certainly interest in using the my health record if it becomes possible um, i also wanted to show you um, some results around telehealth which is particularly interesting too um, so we asked people if they're using telehealth 70% um, of people said yes they're using telehealth where that's either telephone or video calls um, a lot of people used mixed modality of, of telephone and video um, with some using a, only video or only telephone and then across this interestingly when we look at this in general practice the vast majority of telehealth in general practice is telephone only or a very small percentage of video calls interestingly in allied health much more spread across the spectrum some practices using telehealth including video for 100 percent of their calls um, so this is much more uniform as a, a distribution compared to general practice um, we also asked a little bit about the platforms that people are using for telehealth um, and we wanted to provide a little bit of commentary around this because we still see people predominantly using telephone but also zoom and teams as platforms um, whilst those are reasonable platforms and there are other platforms available to allied health professionals um, in particularly in particular their health direct platform is arguably a better platform for healthcare um, for a number of reasons for for security reasons and also because it's designed for use in healthcare whereas tools like facetime skype zoom teams are not typically designed um, for use in healthcare and they can have some particularly skype and facetime can have some side effects such as patients being able to call you back at times when you don't have an appointment with them um, which has created some medico legal uncertainty for some people and just annoyance for others um, we also looked at what services people are using uh, are providing to patients using telehealth and there's a real range here so it depends on the profession um, in terms of, of what they were doing um, Joe I think you also had a couple of questions um, you wanted to raise was that was that right yeah um, I was just wondering with the maturity levels of foundational intermediate advance what would a typical say practice look like um, at those levels or or how they would be um, using technology yeah good question Joe and I've got a couple of slides here just to try and paint that picture and we can certainly make these slides available after this presentation um, so at the foundational level practices who are very much at the early stages of their digital health journey um, often this is single practitioner practices um, who continue to use paper for record keeping no access to the my health record um, often little or no telehealth to capability no telehealth capability outside of maybe you know skype or, or facetime um, so we've just put a few kind of broad outline broad brush strategies for people at that kind of level so adopting a practice management system and we've um, got a list here with a url to a list of my health record compliant practice management software um, that could be useful if you want to follow up there um, improving cybersecurity awareness is always something of critical importance and we've provided links to some great resources here from the Australian Digital Health Agency around awareness and, and some of the fundamentals of cybersecurity. Um, Excuse me, Tim, also, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Could you Thanks. please um, zoom in the slides a little bit um, um, to the I, bigger? Can you do that? I don't think I can, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, no, maybe I can. Well. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit big. Now it's gone off the page. Yep, that's better. Yeah. Um, so backups as well, I think, um, are something that that um, we pointed out need to potentially be worked on by some practices. So again, we've got some links for that. And getting started with using the My Health Record as well. Um, yeah, we've um, we haven't actually got the URLs in here, but we do have some some links that you can Google, and you'll find some really good onboarding resources um, for using the My Health Record if that's what you want to do. Um, also, very quickly, um, we also have similar slides for intermediate and advanced practices. So obviously, different needs at those levels. Intermediate practices are people who are making good progress on their journey. They they tend to be slightly larger in size, um, and may or may not typically don't have my health record access yet um, but often using some kind of telehealth platform 
Um, we've provided links to the ability to use secure messaging, which can be a really good way to communicate with other parts of the health system, um, to be able to explore the use of telehealth and the PHN have some good resources on that and so did the Australian Digital Health Agency. And then to start thinking potentially about developing policies and procedures, they don't have to be heavyweight, but just thinking about some of the governance structure around the collection of data. And then finally, advanced practices who are, who are obviously more proactive in this space tends to correlate with larger size practices, often you're using my health record already. Um, and there's still work even amongst that cohort to use the appropriate telehealth platforms. Um, we've provided links to the Health Direct service, which is available to allied health practices. Um, and the focus for practices at this level is, is more things like meaningful use. So actually up, um, increasing uploads and use of my health record, um, and then exploring potentially new digitally enabled models of care. So there's some really exciting other ways of, of doing things through collecting patient information from apps, remote patient monitoring, um, if you're in physiotherapy, prescribing exercise and other things using apps and, and other tools. Um, so a range of things there that are available to those who are listening to this podcast, either live or on playback. Um, you might want to go and have a look at those side slides and follow up on the URLs. So I hope that answers the question, Joe. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, one other thing, Tim, I often get asked by practices, you know, that they're concerned about the security of, of having patient information in the cloud and, you know, losing access. What would you say to practices that have that concern? Yeah, look, I mean, it might seem counterintuitive, but actually putting a lot of this um, data into the cloud is often more safe than it is storing it on your own premises. Um, we're working very hard. A lot of general practice still uses um, systems that are run locally. Um, and these days that the security required to secure and, and treat data properly um, is so sophisticated that it's quite hard to maintain that level of security if you do it yourself. Moving it into a cloud-based um, provision model where it's someone else's responsibility to do that for you often ensures that it's treated with much greater security than were you to do it yourself. Um, so we, we have for a while now been encouraging people to do that. A lot of these cloud-based platforms have to go through quite rigorous testing to make sure they can store the data where they do. Um, often solutions are um, uh, very tailored to Australia so that they store data locally within Australia. Um, but I absolutely would have no um, qualms about storing data within a cloud-based system because these days it's just more secure than doing it locally yourself. Great, thanks. Um, just move to the next slide. Um, a lot of people on the survey um, had asked us if they could have more information about Health Pathways. So we have included in the slide deck um, links to access Health Pathways and more information on our website. And on the next slide, you'll see other key contact information um, at the PHN, uh, the allied health at the phn.com.au. If you have any further questions or you wanna to speak to one of our teams specifically, or you wanna talk about your maturity assessment for your practice, please reach out. Uh, there's also other links um, there and also in Tim's presentation there were hyperlinks included in the presentation to resources that were really valuable. So I'll leave it there and if you have any questions at all if you could put them into the chat now that would be fantastic and Sydney will read them out if anyone has a question specifically. Nothing has come through, guys. Okay, we might end it there if there's no further questions. Thank you, Sydney. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for all, all that important information. Um, I can't wait for everyone to watch this and play back as well that couldn't make it today. Um, and just a reminder, if you can complete the evaluation survey at the end of this, that will automatically come to you. Um, thank you, Tim. Thanks, Joe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.